Hi, welcome to Mooney Reads. My name is Beck, and today I am going to be showing you all some books that I am getting rid of. I am really bad at getting rid of things, but over the past couple of weeks I've gone through my books and I have found some that I think I'm okay with getting rid of. I've got over 40 that I was able to pick out. Really, honestly, I probably could have gotten more if you check out my library tour video. You can see that there are definitely ones that I'm not going to get to for a long time that maybe I should consider tossing, but I think that 40 is more than a good start. I'll kind of jump around to different genres throughout this. To start out with, there are some books that I just didn't need. I'm no longer in Spanish, so no more Spanish to English dictionary. We've got an old research manual, a thesaurus when I have the internet. I also have several books on writing. I don't need a Grammar Cliff Notes book. Um, this is kind of dated and I don't like I teach, I do teach kids sometimes, but I, I don't need this book, honestly. Um, and then I also have a writer's notebook. Uh, I got this when I was really little and I have lots of other writing books. So those are all going. I have some religious oriented stuff that I'm getting rid of just because I have so much of it. I've got a lot of family who gets me that sort of stuff and I tend to go out and get like the theological based books that I want anyways. Um, so I've got like magazines and small books from when I was in high school or middle school. A lot of different gendered books. I have no idea why it's gendered when it's the same Bible. Um, I certainly don't want any women's books to be honest. I've got this book which I think is from like a popular Christian music singer. I don't really like that music necessarily. It's um, a little bit superficial to me, to each their own. Um, I've got kind of a Q&A sort of book. Um, and again, I, ha I have a lot of other devotions and um, theology books, so it's just really not necessary for me. Um, the History of the End of the World. I am not about some end of times theology. It's just as interesting as Revelations is, the point of the Bible isn't to focus on the end of the world. So, there's that, and I actually also have a Bible that I'm getting rid of because I have three, at least. Um, really, I have more. I have a couple of books that I have previously unhauled, and one of them was a New Testament. Um, I don't need 500 of the same book unless there are different translations that I'm comparing, which I'm not currently doing that. Um, I've had this probably since elementary school, so I think I'm better with the Bible that I had for my Bible is Lit class that was more thorough. Moving on, I'm going to talk about a little bit of fiction. I have books 2, 3, and 4 of Tarzan, which I picked up like at a thrift store. They were probably like a dollar each or something. I thought that they would be fun to look at, um, but first of all, I don't have the first book, and second of all, I just have so many other books that I need to read. I don't really have time, so they're better to go off to a home that will actually spend time with them. I also have The Hostage, which is a young adult book about a killer whale. Again, this is one that maybe, maybe is worth reading. I don't know. I impulse bought it at a thrift store, and I have so many other ones that I need to read. The next one that I have is Betrayed, which is the second or third book in the Marked series. I just had two copies of it and don't need two copies of it. The same goes for Twilight. This was the original copy that I got and read when I was actually like into the series in like 2009 or whatever it was. I actually have the version that was recently released that one side of it is Twilight and then the other side of it is like the gender swapped Twilight, which I have not read yet. Uh, I'm not sure when I'll read it. I do want to eventually, but it's not a priority. Next, I have Bloom Into You, um, Volumes 1 and 2. Um, if you've seen any of the other videos on my channel, you probably know that I have been trying to get into some LGBT manga and graphic novels. I tried Bloom Into You, I gave it a chance, I read the first two, was just super not into it. The power dynamic really creeped me out. Um, it felt very coercive. So into the unhaul pile they go. Some nonfiction, we have 
Stephen Hawking's universe, which I think it has some like intro pieces for the stuff that Stephen Hawking wrote. As fascinating as that is, this is not at all my realm of like scientific stuff, so I feel like it would probably go over my head. I'm not super sure. I'm interested, but I'm like watching SciShow interested, not necessarily reading a book interested. This is actually a book that my roommate gave me. She accidentally bought it because she thought that it was one of his actual books and was $1.50 at a thrift store. Um, and she was irritated, so she was like, here, please take it. And I was like, okay. But I never read it. I'm sure that it's good, but it's just not kind of my niche. I have a hard time saying no to free books, which is why I have a whole stack of philosophy books. Um that are probably old and outdated versions of different things. One of them is clearly like a journal from forever ago. I tried to Google the couple of books and I found out a little bit about the authors, but honestly, if I'm going to be looking into any of the topics that these books cover, it's mostly like political stuff. I have other options on these topics that are going to be way more helpful than just random ones that I picked up. The next pile that I have to grab from is fiction, and the first one on that we have is Anne Rand, We the Living. I read one Anne Rand book in high school, and I like the idea of reading some of her other books because I know some about her politics. I've read excerpts. I've read excerpts about things. Um, so I did kind of want to sit and read a book myself. Honestly, I think that I bought this book probably at a time when I just knew that her name was something big and I should probably read it. It didn't happen and honestly I have so many other books to read I am not going to analyze Anne Rand anytime soon. The next we have A Price for Everything by Mary Sheepshanks which is like a light like humor chiclet sort of thing. Um, I'm honestly not really sure where I got it but the chances of me going out of my way to read it are pretty slim right now. Judy Bacolt, Keeping Faith, I've had for a long time and haven't read. I read Her Sister's Keeper a while ago, like probably eight to ten years ago. Um, so I had this book with the intention of reading it and it hasn't happened. It probably won't happen. I have After the Moment, which is, I think, young adults. It's like a romancy sort of a thing. I... Again, this is one that I bought forever ago and just never got around to, but it doesn't seem that great and I have a lot of other better books to read. If I'm wrong about any of these and they just ended up being super great, please tell me because chances are I'm not going to be able to bring these books anywhere anytime soon. Um, so if there's one that I should un unhaul, let me know. The next book I have, The Walls Came Tumbling Down by Babs Deal. This was a random book that my grandmother was going to throw away, again, at least a decade ago, possibly more. It's not really, it seems like kind of a general fiction, drama-y book. I'm just probably not going to read it anytime soon. And I'm not even sure if it's good necessarily. The next book that I have is A Million Little Pieces by James Frey. Um... I know that there's some questionable things surrounding this book. Um, maybe he like fabricated pieces of it. I'm not super stoked about hearing that about a piece of work. Uh, for a while I was really interested in narratives about like mental health and addiction. I got super into Nick Sheff's books. He has um, one memoir tweaked that I've read at least two times if not more. Um, and then another one, We All Fall Down. Tweak is about his experience with kind of meth and heroin. And then We All Fall Down talks about his subsequent alcoholism and social dependence on marijuana. His story is interesting and getting to learn kind of what things are like from someone who's lived it. Like looking at the grip that addiction can have on somebody and the actual physical symptoms that come with that. Um... When I read those, I also um, ended up looking into his dad's book, which is called Beautiful Boy, which I think takes place around the same time that Tweak does. They're both memoirs, but you get his like dad's side as well as his side. It was super good and interesting. Um, so I think that's probably around the same time that I picked up this book. 
but I'm not necessarily as into those narratives at the current moment, although that's just because I have other stuff to read. There's nothing wrong with them. But again, just some of the scandal or whatever with this book, I'm, I wasn't necessarily as interested in going in and reading something if it wasn't going to be authentic. The next book is supposedly nonfiction. Um, I'm not sure if I buy that. Maybe you do. Communion, a true story. It is exactly what it looks like. It is an alien abduction story. I think I read most of this, if not all of it. This is actually a book that one of my mom's former boyfriends when I was a kid accidentally left at our house. Um, and so I read it and I've kept it since then. It's super weird. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it if you're interested in that, but just alien abductions and probing, I'm just, the chances of me rereading this at the current moment are pretty slim. Next is another pile of fiction. We have The Memoirs of a Geisha by Arthur Goldman. I have not read all of this. I think that I started to read it forever ago, but I've honestly had this book for like a decade or longer and I haven't gotten to it. So I'm going to get rid of it. And honestly, the idea of learning about this culture and the experiences of people who are geishas is interesting. I've seen criticism that this is very much like a Western view of geishas. And, like, I'm I'm probably not going to get to this in the first place. And if I was going to read something about it, I would just want something more authentic. The next books that I have are several thrillers. I don't really read a whole lot of these types of thrillers. So I went ahead and got rid of some of them. If you, again, watched my kind of overview of my bookshelf, you saw my thriller section and the absurd amount of Stephen King that's in it. Um, I don't really need more stuff from random authors that I'm probably not going to read. Um, so we have Masquerade by Gail Linz. The Deep Blue Goodbye by John McDonald. And Dean Kuntz's Phantoms. As well as Michael Conley's The Closers. This just really isn't a genre I'm that interested in. These are all books that I randomly bought probably when I was in high school at discounted places. And I thought, oh, this sounds like maybe neat. I don't really know what I like. Let's just get all the things. And I'm probably not going to read them. Now, the next book that I'm going to get rid of, I actually really, really love. Um, it's a book that I think that everyone should read. The problem with this book was the version that I ended up getting. I bought it on Amazon, the cheapest one that I could find, and that was a mistake because it looks like somebody printed out a weird version of like the Kindle book and a kind of crappy cover that was on fancy paper. Um, the New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander featuring pixelated pictures for the cover and just Look at how small that print is. Who did this? Who did this and why? Because I need some words with you. Um, like I said, this is an excellent book and I actually have a real version of it. I actually got the 10th anniversary edition, which has an intro. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to totally reread it, but I did read the introduction and it is awesome. It kind of recontextualizes this a little bit. Um, or basically talks about how it just definitely is still relevant. She also talks about, like, why she focused on men in prisons rather than women. She talked about a lot of things in this new intro. Just that by itself, I think, is worth the read. Um, so go out and buy the 10th anniversary edition. And don't buy weird random versions on Amazon because you'll end up having to struggle in order to read anything. Um... The good thing that came out of this is that I had the opportunity to get the 10th anniversary edition, which came out this year, so if I would have bought the regular version, I might have not felt inclined to get this. But it also gives me a, a reason, um, or an additional reason, to reread this so that I could go by um, and kind of transport my notes to my new version. The next book that I have is Race, Class, and Gender in the United States by Paula Rothenberg. This is the fourth edition. I actually own the tenth edition. I was given a copy of the tenth edition. I think that I probably got the fourth in, like, a thrift store somewhere. That's where I get half my books. Um, there is no need for me to have the fourth edition if I have the tenth or eleventh sitting on my shelf. The next one that I'm getting rid of is Signs of Life. In the USA, readings on popular culture for writers. Um, this book came out in 2000. 
popular culture in the year 2000 was not the same as it is currently, so this isn't necessarily useful unless I wanted to write a book set there, and I don't really need to do that. Um, I'm probably not going to get much use out of this book. Somebody else would probably use it better than I would. Next we have this book. It's called Dumbing Down Our Kids by Charles Sykes. This is one of the impulse thrift store buys. It's clearly been through the ringer so far as thrift stores go. I got it a long time ago. I wanted to know what it said, um, but honestly I don't have any urge to really read it. And if I did read it, I feel like I would be more critiquing it than actually getting anything out of it. Um, so this one's gone. The next book that I'm getting rid of, I have read. That is Naked Economics by Charles Whelan. I had to read it for high school and I just don't see myself rereading it. So it's gone. The final book that I will be unhauling is a workbook, Reading Skills for Grade 4, I was doing some private tutoring with a kid who was in fourth grade, so I was utilizing these worksheets. I am no longer tutoring kids. Um, I just don't have the time, and I mean, clearly I'm not tutoring anyone at the current moment except for my online classes, which are formatted differently. I'm not going to be using um, these sort of worksheets in my online classes. And most of the kids that I see in my online classes are a little bit older anyways. The only actual writing classes that I have on there are creative writing anyways. Um, and then I also have history and feminist studies. But I'm just, I'm not teaching this and I'm not going to use it. So I'm going to give it probably to one of the homeschool families that I know. And I think those are all of the books that I have that I'm going to be unhauling. Let me know if I should on unhaul any of these. If there are any of these books that you just really think that I should keep and actually read, definitely let me know. My plans for unhauling these are not set in stone. I'm not even sure when I'll be able to safely go and give these to anyone. I mean, I'll probably give these books to one of the homeschool families that I know. For the rest of them, I'll probably find some sort of local exchange. If not, I'll just give them to a thrift store or find some kind of school nearby that might take them. So yeah, that is my stack of books that I'm going to be unhauling. Thank you for watching. Bye.